What was the ridiculous reason that almost led to Jim Parsons not being cast? <laughs> Which co-star did he almost infect? Leonard, I'm sick! And why was the actor so worried about his personal life affecting the show? Sheldon, are you, are you all right? Let's dive in. Bazinga! Too good to be true? Jim Parsons knocked it out of the lab as the eccentric nerd Sheldon Cooper. But did you know that the show's creators had doubts about casting him? And you won't believe why. It is highly unlikely that you two rubes could ever surprise me. It turns out that Jim was just too good during his first audition, and the showrunner Chuck Lorre didn't think that Jim would be able to keep delivering the goods on a regular basis. Why? Well, the reason is ridiculous. Hear it for yourself. I, I said, can he come back in and do it again? Because I, I thought maybe it was a fluke of some kind. But it wasn't. He's a genius. He's a comic genius. Jim knocked his second audition out of the park and made Chuck eat his own words. That being said, a couple of Jim's future co-stars could just have easily beaten him to the role of television's most beloved theoretical physicist. These days, we all remember Johnny Galecki as the hunky Leonard Hofstadter. Once upon a time, however, Johnny was in line for the part of Sheldon, and he almost got the gig. The Big Bang Theory's creators were already fans of Johnny following his turn in Roseanne, and he was offered the role of Dr. Cooper. But the actor was tired of playing best friend characters and sidekicks. He wanted to spice up his performances with romantic arcs, and playing Sheldon was never gonna scratch that itch. What? <laughs> Instead, Johnny decided to channel all of his energies into becoming Leonard, and the rest is history. Needless to say, it worked out well for Johnny and Jim in the end, which must have made Kevin Sussman jealous. Kevin made a big bang in his own right after portraying Stewart in over 80 episodes, but he tried out for the Sheldon and Leonard parts early on. It wasn't to be, but getting to play Stewart wasn't all that bad. I could do worse. <laughs> but you can't help but wonder if Jim beating Kevin to the punch is what caused the convincing tension between their characters in the show. <laughs> you bowl like your mama. <laughs> Unless, of course, she bowls well, in which case you bowl nothing like her. <laughs> it seems that competing for the role of Sheldon was a hotly contested affair. And I'm sure that some of those actors probably identified with Sheldon's nerdy ways more than Jim. Being nothing like Sheldon. Jim Parsons did such a great job at bringing Sheldon Cooper to life for 12 seasons that it was very easy to forget about the person behind the fictional physicist. With that in mind, some viewers might be shocked to learn that Jim Parsons is basically the exact opposite of Sheldon Cooper. I am not a scientist. I don't speak Klingon. I do have a male roommate, but I assure you it's a vastly different arrangement. The real Jim is way more easygoing than his socially awkward counterpart, and they don't share any of the same hobbies either. I don't know any more about science, and I'm still not into graphic novels, and I don't watch Star Trek, and there's nothing wrong with any of that, those things. I mean, you know, God bless science and graphic novels and Star Trek, but it's just not my thing. Jim is actually a big fan of sports and Grey's Anatomy, which are two things that you'd never see Sheldon entertaining the notion of. <laughs> Maybe Jim isn't the type of guy who'd wake up at 6.15 a.m. every Saturday morning to watch episodes of Doctor Who, but playing Sheldon appealed to him for other reasons. Namely, the opportunity to act like a jerk and get away with it. Geology isn't a real science! In an interview with Variety, the actor revealed that Sheldon's unfiltered obnoxiousness and tendency to ruin the soppy moments in life were right up his street. I can't stand sentimentality, and I feel very lucky to be playing a character that, nine times out of ten when something sentimental is happening in a script, I get to be the one to burst that bubble. And that gives me such great pleasure I can't tell you. Comment to that. But let's not forget that Jim had to play a convincing smarty pants as well, and that didn't come easy. The biggest challenge. Sheldon Cooper has a super brain, but the actor behind him is just a normal guy who doesn't know anything about math, science, and superheroes. No, I'm not Sheldon, I'm the Flash. <laughs> Yet he was able to discuss such weighty subjects with relative ease during his tenure in the Big Bang Theory. 9.8 meters per second per second. So we can see that MA equals MG, and what do we know from this? However, this required a lot of preparation, including writing note cards, preparing Word documents, and studying Wikipedia. Jim didn't know what he was talking about, but he managed to log the words into his brain and make us believe that he was a genius. I need the muscle memory to be 
in my mouth at least to be really ready to go because if I do think about it, A, the right words will never occur to me, and B, the ones that do will just be wrong. If only becoming a master of actual theoretical physics was that easy. Still, at least Jim was comfortable with the naughty scenes. Locking lips with the ladies. Sheldon Cooper is all about physics, but getting physical is another story. All my life, I have been uncomfortable with the sort of physical contact that comes easily to others. Handshaking, hugging, prostate exams. <laughs> However, the actor didn't seem to mind engaging in smoochy time with his colleagues. While Jim and Kaylee Kuoko are in happy real-life relationships, their tonsil tennis activities weren't the big deal. In fact, they even had fun giving the studio audience something to scream about. Here's what Jim said about it in a conversation with Glamour. It's always awkward to a degree, but this was shockingly easy. We had so much fun, and it was so much fun to do it live in front of the audience. Of course, most of Jim's kissing sessions were with Maya and Bialik, as their characters became the show's most unconventional and endearing couple. So kissing's romantic. I'm sure you're probably wondering why Jim was so sweaty during that scene. Maybe he felt under pressure to deliver a romantic scene that was sweeter than 3.14? Not exactly. Apparently, Jim had a fever and was feeling under the weather at the time, but his illness didn't stop the on-screen lovebirds from providing an immortal television moment. However, Mayim did have to wash her mouth out with hydrogen peroxide afterward. Who said romance is dead? After a long day, I always turn on smooth jazz and spray deer musk on my inner thighs. <laughs> Jim's experience on The Big Bang Theory was overwhelmingly positive for the most part, but there was a time when he worried that his personal life would hurt the show. Coming out While Hollywood appears to be a more open-minded place these days, some celebrities still shy away from coming out as they fear it will negatively impact their careers. It was only a few months ago that Kate Winslet revealed that she knows plenty of actors who still feel this way, so you can imagine how Jim Parsons must have felt when he officially came out as gay in 2012. Jim knew that his colleagues would be supportive and that he wouldn't get fired, though he did worry about the reaction potentially harming the series. I wasn't scared about losing my job, and I wasn't scared to the point of denying my sexuality, but I was scared enough to make it my mission not to talk about it. I was scared enough to be nervous the first time I was even nominated for the Emmy, and I was scared that it might cause trouble, quote unquote, for our big television show. Jim's fans responded very positively to the news, however, and he learned to embrace the decision to be true to himself fairly quickly. And he probably inspired others to take ownership of who they are as well. Uh, if that helps anybody, or I don't know, if it has any effect at all, then great, but it was, it's just who I am, you know. Jim used his platform from the Big Bang Theory to be an inspiration to many, but his run as Sheldon Cooper had to come to an end eventually. Saying goodbye. Would you turn down $50 million to star in a hit TV series? Once you've spent $20 million, you're much more likely to give me an additional 50. That's the dream for most people with acting aspirations. But after more than a decade playing Sheldon, Jim needed to step away and focus on his personal life. Not even all the money in the world would have been enough to convince him otherwise. After doing Broadway following the show's 11th season, the actor felt burnt out and needed some time away to recharge his batteries. He also couldn't bear to be away from home while his dog was sick. I was exhausted and I was really upset about it. More than anything, one of our dogs was getting really at the end of his life around then. Jim's decision to leave also meant the end of the show, but that's only because his fellow cast members didn't want to continue without him. While they were initially in a state of shock after learning about Jim's decision, they all knew it just wouldn't be the same. But Jim did have some parting words for Sheldon before they said goodbye for the last time. I'm not even sure it's made me a better person, because you really don't bring those kinds of qualities. So I think that if anything, I've helped you become a better person. If you want to see more from Sheldon and the gang, be sure to check out our Big Bang Theory videos.